Dice Stars. This is a very simple and abstract game published by Witskit. It comes in a small box, so it's also portable, and here you have the general instructions. As you can see, it can be played solo. There's a specific variant to play it solo, but I played it solo in the easiest possible way, which is to try to score as many points as possible and beat my own previous score. The game is a dice game, and so it comes with a bag full of, you guessed it, dice. Now, as you can see, these dice come in different colors. The colors seem different enough. I hope that that makes the game playable by colorblind players, because color is important. So dice will come in different colors, and these dice have numbers between 2 and 6, and then they have a side with a star that does not count as the number one, counts as, well, its own thing. Then we have a nice block of, uh, of score sheets that are double-sided, so that's a lot of play that you have there. Each player will take one at the beginning of the game, you put all of the dice in the bag, and you're ready to start the game. Now, when it is your turn, what you do is you will draw a dice from the bag. You have to draw the number between 1 and 3. If there aren't any dice available, then it has to be 3. So, at the beginning of the game, you draw 3 dice and then you roll them. But general idea is you will draw between 1 and 3 dice. Then you will take some dice. So that is, you will take all dice that show the same number, for example, these two or all dice of the same color. Pretty much in this case I can take all dice, the all black dice or all orange dice. To make things more interesting, suppose that, that the situation is actually this one. So now I could take, if I take four color, if I use color I can take these three dice. If I say I'm gonna take all threes, I can take these all fours, all stars, and all five. And if you, when you take a group, when you identify it, you have to take all dice in that group. You're taking threes, you take them all, you're taking fours, you take them all. You draw dice, you roll them, you select all of those of one color or all of those with a single number, and then you discard them, and then you also mark your, your uh, score sheet. How do you mark it? Suppose that you're selected the color, so we take these two for orange, then you look at the column that corresponds to your color and you're like, where is orange? So there isn't one, so I assume the yellow here is the one for orange. Now you will mark a number of boxes in the column corresponding to the color equal to the number of dice. I took two dice, so I'll mark two boxes. What do you put in those boxes? X's in all of them, with the exception of one, the last one in which you will place a number corresponding to the sum of the dice, on the numbers on the dice. So, for example, I'll mark two, um, I'll mark two spaces here. The first will be an X up here, and the second one will be a seven. I take these three dice here, then I'll place an X here, an X here, and then I will place a, is that a 12? I think it's a 12, and so it'll be X, X, 12. You only use empty spaces, suppose that, because then if you think numbers you write in rows, suppose it was a number here, then so I write an X here, an X here, and a 12 here. So what happens if instead you take uh, all the dice with, all dice with the same number, well, this time you use the row and you use empty boxes again. You move from left to right, so as opposed to here you were from top to bottom. You go from left to right and you write same idea. A number of x's equal to the number of dice and the last space will have a number. So in this case, three fours, then is x, x, 12. As you can see, some areas are white and some are, are, gr are green. Don't worry about those for now. They, you can write on them normally, but as you can see, you can write in the green boxes only by using dice with the same number, no, by dice with the same color. These will fill up much faster. But you can also choose stars, in which case you have to take all dice to show star. Suppose I make that choice and I take these. Remember when you take a dice then you put them in the in a discard area 
and when hey, when the bag is empty, you will use it. You will use that to refill your ear. There are also other situations where you will take the discarded dice and you'll put them there. But back to our stars. When you take stars, you will mark a number of spaces equal to the number of dice that you took in this other area here. And you're trying to fill to fill rows in tally. So with these two dice, I will probably mark these two uh, these two boxes here to immediately fill up that row. Suppose I did that earlier, so maybe I put them here, I put them here, etc, etc. But you definitely want full rows and you do not want incomplete rows. So at the end of the game, looking at the example on the player aid, on, on the rules, maybe your board will look, your, your score sheet will look a little bit like this with numbers that you've wrote going in different directions. And some of these rows will be hopefully filled up and some maybe, maybe uh, incomplete. The, the, game, the end of the game is triggered when a player has filled up all of their white white spaces in this area or when after rolling dice and taking dice you always have to take dice the player cannot actually fit them cannot actually fit them anywhere on the board in which case the player uh, calculates the total the sum uh, on those dice writes it here in the penalty box and then we are ready to ready to uh, calculate the final score the final score is simply based on the numerical value of each line you add together all of the numbers in that line now if the line if the corresponding row in this section is empty then you simply have the number suppose it's 15 then i write 15 here if the if the row corresponding row in this section is full then you double that suppose i have 15 here then that means 30. however if a row has some access but is incomplete then the line doesn't score again looking at the, at the instructions as you can see what happens here this line is worth 15 points nothing is here so it is 15 points this line is also worth 15 points but it's next to a line which is completely filled up then it's 30. alas here we have a line which is incomplete and so well, likely enough it wasn't worth much it's worth zero you add all of those if you were the player that triggered the game by penalty you take that penalty and after adding all these numbers and possibly taking a penalty you have your final score the player with the highest total is the winner of the game so dice stars this game is very simple very linear incredibly uh, intuitive when it comes to the to the basic idea grab dice based on color or number but the scoring system makes it interesting now it remains a very simple very casual game mind you but the decisions that you have in there uh, have interest not just in the sense of of course what you're trying to do for yourself you want to score as much as you can but also in terms of what you're leaving for the opponent. I want a lot of options, then I grab a lot of dice, but then I may be leaving some really interesting sets for the opponent. This is particularly important when it comes to the stars that can double the score on a line. Because, well, if there, are, there are two stars, say there are two stars there, um, and my two line has already been filled up, I could take those, but of course the risk is what happens if I don't finish that line until the end, uh, before the end. So I leave those there, but then I roll the dice and I roll another star and then maybe the next opponent uh, will be able to take them. Or again, or after I rolled a lot of dice, so there are different combinations and now and now three dice are left. The more dice are leaving there, the more options the next player will have. But of course, uh, I may get lucky too. But the fact that you um, may choose to take an incomplete set of stars, both because you're hoping to complete it and to take it away from an opponent, or you can wait until there is one that is ready and then you take that one, that to me is an interesting decision. I wouldn't say it's what the design revolves around, but it is really a major element. Because if you're doubling a line that has 15, 20 points, well, that is, as you can imagine, particularly strong. 
I see how the game could uh, potentially uh, potentially uh, give rise to analysis paralysis, but I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem because in most cases you will have two, three options to consider. And it is interesting, again, it is interesting. Those are important decisions, interesting decisions, fun decisions, but I don't think that people are going to be overwhelmed. I see a small possibility with some uh, combos of dice if the, if the player really wants to make sure that all options are considered and also taking into account uh, what is left there for the next that may happen but I don't think that is going to be a concern in general it is a game that moves fast that is extremely simple but not simplistic not again to the point in which simplicity results into bland uh, trivial gameplay gameplay is fun for what it is mind you it is a simple game it is a filler it has advantage, you can also play it solo. Again, there's a Soiter variant that frankly I haven't played. Uh, I read it and it seemed uh, needlessly convoluted when I can just play it to beat my previous score and I had fun also playing it that way. You can play with children, you can play with your spouse if your spouse is not a, he's not a strong gamer. So there are a lot of uses that you can have for this game. In general, Dice Star is a simple, clean and fun design.